All right, so the second half of 12.1, it uh, revolves around spontaneity and what we call the five-step method, uh, and that's used to predict redox reactions. So our goals here are to identify oxidizing and reducing agents, to determine the spontaneity of a reaction using the table of reduction potentials, and that's in our data booklet, to develop redox tables on our own, there's two methods of that, and use the five-step method to predict redox reactions. Now this is a long lesson, so I might actually split this into two videos, um, so stay tuned for that. So spontaneity. A redox reaction is a transfer of electrons from one substance to another. We learned that with our half reactions and redox reactions last lesson. One entity is able to strip electrons away from another, resulting in a redox reaction. The re reactants in a redox reactions are classified in terms of their ability to lose or gain electrons. In all redox reactions, electrons are transferred from a reducing agent to an oxidizing agent. So just like there's oxidation and reduction, now there's reducing agents and oxidizing agents. So an oxidizing agent or what I'll refer to as an OA from here on out, promotes oxidation by removing or gaining electrons from another substance and is therefore reduced itself. So if it's removing the electrons from something else, it's gaining them, and we know that Leo says grr. All right. These guys typically have a high electronegativity value, uh, so they like electrons quite a bit. They'll steal them any chance they get. And typically we're going to see these as non-metal compounds or metal ions. That's a big one. Reducing agents, or RAs, promote reduction of another compound by donating, or losing, electrons to another substance and is therefore oxidized itself. So notice how an OA is, is something is an oxidizing agent if it undergoes reduction, and a reducing agent is something that undergoes oxidation. So they're kind of the opposites. A reducing agent typically has low electronegativity values, uh, so it loses electrons very easily. Uh, they are typically solid metals or non-metal ions. Note that oxidation and reduction are processes, so we can define them as something is happening. Whereas an oxidizing agent and reducing agents are substances. So we can identify a reaction as oxidation or reduction, but we can ident actually identify um, an atom or a compound as a reducing agent or oxidizing agent. These guys are all determined from reactant side of an equation, so we're not going to be too considered, um, too, sorry, too concerned with products um, when we're looking at oxidizing and reducing agents. So, I have an example here, and we're going to use that um, for. Um, our definitions. So we can see that copper goes from a zero charge to a two plus charge. Now, it must have been losing electrons to get there, and it must have lost two electrons total. Silver, on the other hand, silver went from a one plus to a neutral compound. It must have gained electrons, and it gained one electron per silver because that's why we have two. So we can say that copper undergoes oxidation, and therefore it must be reducing silver. Silver is reduced, copper must be causing that to happen. Therefore, copper is called a reducing agent. It causes um, silver to be reduced. Silver undergoes reduction and oxidizes copper. Therefore, silver is an oxidizing agent. Okay. So page 7 of your data table is a list of oxidizing agents and reducing agents. The redox table was developed from many experiments and the evidence is collected and uh, tabulated. This table is used to compare the strength of oxidizing agents and reducing agents to predict spontaneous redox reactions. The table uh, shows reduction half reactions. I do believe it's my next slide here. The double arrows indicate that the reaction can be read in both directions. Oxidation half reactions are the reverse of a reduction half reaction. So let's take a look. Hopefully I have the table. All right, so next slide is our table, I guess. Uh, what we're going to do is define oxidizing agents and reducing agents in terms of our table. So an oxidizing agent is found on the left side of our table. I hope you have yours open. It's listed from the strongest to weakest in strength. The strongest oxidizing agent, or SOA, is at the very top on the left-hand side. So what is the strongest oxidizing agent listed on that table? I do believe uh, that it is F2 um, gas. 
Um, then our reducing agents are found on the right side of the table. They are listed from weakest to strongest. So the one at the very top is the weakest reducing agent and the strongest one is at the bottom. The strongest are, uh, reducing agent listed on the table, I do believe, is lithium solid. Okay, so bottom right hand corner. So what we can see here is our table looks exactly like um, yours in your data booklet on page 7. Um, I've highlighted the electrons to show that they are all on one side of the reaction. They are all reduction half reactions because they are gaining electrons. So if I wanted to write the reduction half reaction, um, say for lithium solid, I would read it backwards. I would say lithium solid makes one electron and lithium one plus. Okay, so I am able to read backwards. These aren't equilibrium reactions, though. Uh, they aren't existing in equilibrium. They're one or the other, uh, dependent on who they're mixed with. So, like I said, uh, the SOA is at the top over here. The SRA is down here. We have our weakest reducing agent on the very top here. And our weakest... Um, oxidizing agent, best spelling ever for three letters, um, on the bottom left. Okay, so now that we know where a table is and we know what an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent is, we need to talk about spontane spontaneity. A spontaneous, oh my goodness, a spontaneous reaction is a reaction that proceeds with no addition of energy or other stimulus. Not all reactions are spontaneous. Just like equilibrium favoring one side or another um, in our acids and bases, spontaneity works the exact same way. So the spontaneity rule states that a spontaneous reaction occurs if the oxidizing agent or the OA is higher than the reducing agent in the table of uh, redox half reactions. So if our OA is higher than our RA, this will be a spontaneous reaction and products will be formed. All right. However, so this is our slide. If our OA is lower than our RA, this is a non-spontaneous reaction um, and no products formed. And the way we do get products in this um, way is we can actually force a non-spontaneous reaction to happen. We talk about that in our second half of our unit and it's by adding none other than electricity. Uh, so this is our hill. So we see the slide and the hill so many times in this um, course. They have different applications, but the same general meaning. So which of the following combinations of substances? Uh, so for each of the following co combinations of substances, state whether the reaction would be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Determine the OA and the RA. Find the location on the reduction half uh, reaction table and apply the spontaneity rule. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to label things as an OA or an RA. Um, you can either search them out in each column or you can remember our rules. Typically an aqueous ion is going to be um, an oxidizing agent. A solid metal is going to be a reducing agent. So I'm going to label this as my OA and this is my RA. Now I know that... Uh, Silver is extremely high up in our table. So what we can do is we can talk about the values next to it. So those numbers will mean something in the end. Um, we'll just use them as reference for now. So silver is at positive 0.8, and we're going to put our right hand on our right hand on um, silver solid. We can find chromium 3 plus, much lower at negative 0.41. So we know that this is a, a hill. Therefore, it is non-spontaneous. Carrying on in this fashion, I can say that this one is spontaneous. You're going to do this all on your own and check your answers. Um, oh, I don't know if... Yes, it is on there. So this is spontaneous. Uh, this is non-spontaneous. And Fe2 plus exists as both an oxidizing and a reducing agent. So because um, I find hydrogen at zero as the reducing agent, Fe must be an OA in this case.
Uh, it is lower, so this is again non-spontaneous. Make sure you take the time to do each of these examples yourself and find these on the table. Get comfortable with this idea. Okay, um, here's an old diploma question. A one molar solution of nickel nitrate could be stored in a container made of blank. So we have four choices here. Do we want our nickel solution to react with our container? Probably not, otherwise it'll eat through it over time. So I want to find a non-spontaneous reaction. Now nickel 2 plus exists as an OA. Okay, and it is at negative 0.26 volts um, on our chart if you need to look for it. So I want to find an RA that is higher than this so that um, my container does not erode over time. I find tin, tin is SN, tin looks like it's higher than nickel. So tin could be a good option. I'm just going to put a little check mark there, but let's keep checking all of our other work. I find iron lower than nickel. Iron solid is at negative 0.45, so that's a bad option. Iron will corrode, it'll rust, and at some point our nickel nitrate solution will start leaking out. Zinc is even lower, still no good. Chromium's even lower, no good. Best answer is tin so that it will not react with my container. So some reactions we want to be spontaneous, but some we don't. So you have to be cautious as to what they're looking for in these questions. All right, I'll do the first example for redox tables. Um, the first method is generally a little bit easier, uh, and I'll do the second method in its own video just because I know that it'll get a little bit longer. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way that we're going to do is where we're given a table of experimental data. The second method is where we are given reactions and spontaneity is indicated. So we're actually going to be building the table like in your booklet using the same idea of spontaneity. So a spontaneous reaction, the OA is higher than the RA um, and vice versa for the non-spontaneous. That's the whole idea. So method one, what we're going to do is we're given data. This isn't going to make sense until I get to the next page, so listen up um, and we'll, we'll practice. Identify the row or column as oxidizing agents or reducing agents. Hint, aqueous metals are almost always the oxidizing agents and solid metals are almost always the reducing agents. Identify the oxidizing agent that has the most spontaneous reactions. It must be higher in the table to have more reducing agents below it, so it is the strongest oxidizing agent. Continue in this fashion uh, to the oxidizing agent where it has no spontaneous reactions and it'll be the weakest one where most of the reducing agents are higher than it. Fill in uh, the reducing agent's opposite. All right, so here's our first example. Uh, the following data was collected during a redox lab investigation. So we're seeing um, W, X, Q, and Z. They mean nothing in terms of elements, um, but their states and charges are important um, in terms of figuring out who's the OA and who's the RA. So if you don't want to generalize, that's A-OK. -okay. Best to just double check your work. What we're going to do is we're going to show um, uh, W, going to W negative, for instance. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. What we can see is that I would actually have to add an electron over on this side. So Leo saying, Grr, we gained an electron. Therefore, this is a reduction, half reaction. And this, um, and our W must be an OA here. Okay, but good thing we checked because we couldn't generalize that these were metals. What do metals normally have for a charge? Well, typically, um, they're going to be a positive. So what we can generalize already is that these are all non-metals. Now, that's not really important. All we needed to know is that this will follow the same trend. All of these are going to be oxidizing agents. Okay, in reverse, my reaction would have been W minus making W and an electron, that would have been an oxidation, therefore W minus is going to be a reducing agent. All right, so we've already figured out um, who's who in our zoo here. Now, what I'm gonna do is we are going to um, go on oxidizing agents. So in our table, 
in our booklet, the strongest oxidizing agent is at the top of the page. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to put um, the strongest oxidizing agent at the top of our table. So SOA here, and we're going to put the, the weakest reducing agent is at the top, remember. Okay, so the strongest oxidizing agent is going to be the one that has the most reactions. So looking at my oxidizing agents here, I can see that Q has the most reactions. Therefore, Q must be my strongest oxidizing agent. Then we can see that um, who's next? Well, it'll be X solid. W has the next least, and Z has the absolute least with no reactions being spontaneous. So it's a very weak oxidizing agent, meaning there's nothing really lower than it in this table. Filling in the other side, very easy. All I need to do is find out what Q becomes. Q became Q2+. plus. So that's what I'm going to put for the reducing agent. We re obviously know that this um, row here, or column, sorry, is reducing agents, so we're just going to fill them in next to their corresponding oxidizing agent. X is a 2 minus, W is a 2 minus, and Z oh, is a 3 minus. So going from bottom to top in our reducing agents, this will be my strongest reducing agent. So technically, it needs to have the most reactions. When we look across the column or the row, it has the most. Next most should be W. Yeah, it had two. Next most should be X. Yeah, it had one. Least number should be Q. Excellent. It's the weakest reducing agent. So we've already finished the question. Okay, so it's just counting check marks and X's and understanding we have to first identify who is our OA and who is our RA here. So for the second method, I'm going to post another video just because it's a little bit lengthier. All right, so the me second method uses the same ideas. It's just presented in a bit of a different way. So it's really similar to that strong acid, strong base table you made in your second in-class assignment for equilibrium. First step, identify the oxidizing agents or reducing agents in each, equ each equation. Um, hint, aqueous metals are almost always the oxidizing agents and solid metals are almost always the reducing agents. Begin with the first two reactants. Place the OA and RA in a position relative to that spontaneity of the reaction. Move to the next reaction that contains one of the entities that you've already um, used or put into that table. Skip any reaction that doesn't relate to the first one. All right, so example. So three reactions among indium, cobalt, palladium, and copper were investigated. The reaction equations below indicate that two spontaneous reactions occurred and only one combination did not react. Using these equations, construct a redox table of half reaction equations using the, showing the relative strengths of the oxidizing and reducing agents. So, oh, my arrows keep disappearing in this. So arrows should be obviously in between here. All right. So we're given uh, three equations, and we're going to use this information to order these in terms of the strongest oxidizing agent to the, re the um, weakest. So uh, cobalt is reduced, therefore it is the OA, Leo Sisker. I'm mostly going off the fact that it's aqueous and indium is a solid, so it must be the RA. I'm going to label all of them while I'm here. So OA and RA. OA and RA. So in our first equation, it's showing that the OA must be higher than the RA for it to be spontaneous. So what we can do is we can fill in that information. All right, so we can say that cobalt, oh, sorry, 2 plus. So cobalt 2 plus must be higher than the RA, which goes on the other side of the table, remember, of indium. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in the opposites. So we know that cobalt is the oxidizing agent, therefore its product must be the reducing agent. So CO solid goes here. And indium 3 plus must be the oxidizing agent to indium solid. Okay, so we were able to fill that in. And remember, it's like adding electrons to this side, it's just like that table we've been creating all, all along, okay, or looking at in our data booklet. 
So that reaction is done. We're only going to use them once. Looking at the next one, we have copper 2 plus and co cobalt solid. Well, cobalt solid is already in our table, so we can build off of that. We can say that copper 2 plus as the OA must be higher than cobalt solid as the RA because, again, it is spontaneous. So I'm going to put Cu2 plus up here. All right, and filling in the table, we see that Cu solid was our product. So once again, we can see this was a spontaneous reaction, that is a spontaneous reaction, and we're looking at the last reaction now. Copper 2 plus is the OA and palladium solid is the RA, and this is a non-spontaneous reaction, meaning the OA must be lower than the RA. So what we can do is we can put palladium solid above. Now we need to find out what the oxidizing agent for palladium would be, and that will be palladium's most common charge. So looking at my data table, that's PD2+. And by data table, sorry, I mean periodic table. So notice that all of these are uh, reduction reactions. We're adding electrons to all sides. It looks exactly like our table um, in our data book that just has a few different compounds in it. So we've created our table. The strongest oxidizing agent will be palladium. The weakest oxidizing agent will be indium 3 plus. The strongest reduced seeding agent will be indium solid. And the weakest reducing agent will be palladium solid. So I'm just going to add that last arrow in there to show that our last equation uh, was not spontaneous. This happens more often than the other example or the other method on your diploma. So you should feel very comfortable doing this. Practice makes perfect. There's tons of examples in your work booklet. All right, the five-step method to predict reactions. So now that we've been given reactions, uh, we need to learn how to make them from words. So what we're going to do is a few um, different steps. And I know it looks like lots, but there's lots of hints in here. So list all entities present as reactants and identify the oxidizing and reducing agents. This is where we need major entities. Okay, hints for this. The word aqueous or solution means water is present. Acidified um, means H plus is present. Basic means OH minus is present. Do not dissociate solid compounds. Dissociate soluble ionic compounds and strong acids in solution. For OAs and RAs that are in combination, all ions must be listed. Some substances can be both oxidizing and reducing agents. Um, so for instance, PB2+, plus. we can find it on both sides. Okay. Um, and some chemicals are linked with other chemicals. So show um, some connecting lines, uh, so where they came from, or, um, or list them undissociated. If you do not find it on the table, it is neither an oxidizing or a reducing agent. It's like a spectator in this. So once we've listed everybody out, identify the SOA and the SRA using reduction half reaction table. Okay. Write the reduction and oxidation half reactions for, for these using our table. Okay. Remember, you have to uh, flip the uh, oxidation one. Balance the number of electrons by multiplying by a coefficient and write the net ionic equation. Double check to make sure this is balanced, okay, for charge and atom. And then predict the spontaneity of the reaction using the spontaneity rule and state that above the reaction arrow or beside is fine. So let's do some examples. Predict the most likely redox reaction when potassium permanganate is slowly poured into an acidic iron 2 sulfate solution. First step, we're going to list our entities. So potassium permanganate is soluble. So we get K plus AQ. We get permanganate, which is MnO4 minus AQ. And the fact that those are AQ means that water is present. All right, acidic, H plus. Iron 2 plus sulfate um, will be soluble. So we have Fe2 plus, it's a solution, and SO4 2 minus AQ. Okay, so when we are looking at our data table, we find that K plus is an OA, MnO4 minus is an OA, and it has to have H plus, which we do have. H2O is both an OA and an RA. H plus is an OA all by its lonesome. Fe2 plus can be both an oxidizing and a reducing agent. So it depends who we're looking for. And SO42 minus needs water to react and it can be an OA. The strongest oxidizing agent will be MnO4 with H plus. 
And our strongest reducing agent is going to be, hmm, looks like iron 2 plus. All right, I think that's correct. All right, so what we can do is we can write down our equations as they appear in our data booklet. So we're going to have MN, O4 minus, and 8H plus. Notice how they had to be together. I'm going to drop my states here pretty quickly just so I don't run out of room. And it's one way. It is the reduction half reaction, making MN2 plus and four waters. Now, the opposite one will be our iron reaction. Iron is oxidized to iron 3 plus. And an electron. So to make these equal, I need to multiply this one by 5 and add them up. My electrons will cancel because I'm going to have 5 electrons. So I'm going to end with MnO4 minus and 8H plus and 5Fe2 plus. Don't forget you multiplied. Makes Mn2 plus 4 waters and 5Fe3 three plus. Now my OA is higher than my RA, so this is a spontaneous reaction. All right. And double checking that it is balanced. Irons, all of the atoms look to be balanced here. Uh, checking charge, we have a one minus on this side. Uh, eight positives make seven positives. And uh, two times five is 17. Holy cow. On the other side, I have five times three, which is 15 plus two. So all of the charges are balanced. We are good to go here. Next example, we're going to predict the most likely reaction wherein chlorine gas is bubbled into an iron two sulfate solution. So again, we have iron two plus... We have SO4, 2 minus. Again, all of the states are aqueous, so we have water. And we have chlorine gas, Cl2. Okay, so just remember that it's Cl2. It has to exactly match in our chart. So we can't ever use iron solid because that's not what's present here. It has to be that ion. Same with chlorine. It has to be um, what we see in the chart. So this is an OA and an RA. This is an OA with water, OA and an RA, and this is an OA by itself. Strongest one is chlorine, and my strongest reducing agent is once again iron 2 plus. So we're going to write down our equations. We get Cl2 as a gas and two electrons makes two Cl minus aqueous. Okay, and we get Fe2 plus making Fe3 plus and an electron. Multiply by 2, and we get Cl2 gas, our electrons have cancelled, 2Fe2 plus makes 2Cl minus aqueous, and 2Fe3 plus. Once again, OA is higher than my RA in my chart here, so this is a spontaneous reaction, meaning it will make products. Checking our charges last time here, we have 2 times 2 positive is a 4 positive. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 2 is 4. All of this is balanced. Your homework for this section corresponds to the name. Do as much as you can, um, and I'll double check your answers when we're back.